Imagine this, you're about to build a new PC from scratch, you have all the specs sorted out and listed and have carefully selected the suitable models for your budget and that's when it hits you. What if you invested in a USB sound card? Would it be worth it? Are they actually hidden necessities or just niche products with no value? Find that out and more in our video today. Taking a quick trip down memory lane, for many decades dedicated chips crafted out of a silicone were widely used to produce sounds. For example, the Commodore 64 was a grand scale pick back in 1982 which came with three separate oscillators that produced a plethora of waveforms, filtering and digital audio playback. The people who were on board with IBM machines however had to deal with a comparatively simpler chip that kinda struggled to pronounce a single swirey wave. As the popularity of PCs skyrocketed over the years, audio giants such as Yamaha and Philips came into play. And when the gaming industry caught the news, that's when things started to get interesting. By the 90s, Creative Labs started to make a solid impression due to their Sound Blaster card which marked a glorious time in PC audio. This was further pushed by the support from none other than Microsoft and, as you'd expect, became a must-have for any gamer who was even remotely into PC gaming. However, fast forward to today and it'll be highly unusual if you happen to bump into a PC with a dedicated sound card as a lot of vendors don't even bother mentioning one but even if they do, Creative still holds the crown. And as much as it's because of the quality, the competition wasn't that stiff either with Creative dominating the market and providing a ton of variants to fit different individuals. While there is tech from Asus, EVGA and such, they don't appear as more than a token effort so what gives? What happened to the accessory which an average gamer wouldn't dream of buying a PC without? The short answer? Money. As you already know, anyone who's looking to build a PC from scratch will of course look for two core things. Minimizing the cost and maximizing the performance. And motherboard manufacturers wholeheartedly agreed to this. See, as we saw the dawn of the new millennium, motherboards started to come with audio output plugins. Powering these audio outputs were meager codec chips from vendors such as VIA, Realtalk and Advanced Logic and not unlike AMD and Nvidia, being a semiconductor company Realtek does not make their own chips but uses other manufacturers to do so. When you go through the website of any recent motherboard companies such as Asus or MSI, you'll see two fairly common products branded under Realtek, the ALC1200 and the ALC1220. However, it's good to keep in mind that built-in audio chips weren't the only things that contributed to the fall of the dedicated sound cards, let's visualize a bit. The best gaming headsets nowadays come with a device that plugs into your PC through a USB port. As you can tell, you can either use the USB or just work with the wireless system so the thought of your PC being unusable without a dedicated sound card is kinda obsolete right now. These headsets such as the ones from Razer come with a simple chip embedded into the headset itself or comes in the form of a DAC. This brings us to the penultimate question, are USB sound cards worth it? The answer comes heavily on the side of no, albeit with some slight caveats. You see, with technological prowess, it's borderline impossible to find a discrete sound card that performs better than onboard codecs or USB systems, which makes the sound cards in this time zone fall face first in the market, or at least appears to be. And another thing, it takes a good and experienced ear to understand quality sound and in order to understand quality sound, one requires an above average set of headphones or speakers cause without the core elements, a USB sound card is just a cosmetic at best. In conclusion, a USB sound card is not for everyone considering the easier ways to achieve better audio which makes it a niche market. However, if you want to squeeze the best out of your audio setup, a dedicated USB sound card paired with high quality headphones or speakers will pretty much guarantee maximum clarity and vibrancy. The question is whether you feel the need for it. If you're a podcaster, streamer, musician or basically anyone who works with audio content on a regular basis, should definitely opt for one in order to guarantee maximum audio quality and equipment compatibility. A dedicated USB sound card can also alleviate a ton of audio issues such as stuttering during playback, the static sound of the speakers and everything in between. And it's for people like that, USB sound cards still hold a small share of the market and prevent having prices in the low volume selling segments. So that was our two cents on if the USB sound cards are worth it. Regardless of our opinion, do let us know yours as we'd love to hear from you. And as for everything else, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want more content like this on your feed.